Okay everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at this model of the human ear. And the human ear is compared, uh, composed of uh, several different parts. The ear is roughly divided into an outer, a middle, and an inner area. So let's take a look at the outer ear. And the first thing you're going to notice is we've got this ear flap. And of course being anatomy, it's got two names, right? It's called the auricle or the pinna. And this auricle slash pinna is composed of two different parts. We've got the helix and we've got the ear lobe. Okay. The helix is composed of that elastic cartilage we talked to while the ear lobe is fleshy. Okay. Now, this is the entrance way into the ear. We've got an entryway right here, right here, into the auditory canal. And the auditory canal is lined with cells that produce earwax. And the external canal here is going to be filled with air, A-I-R. Um, we're going to run up against this structure over here. Let me see if I can get a little closer look for you. Which is referred to as the tympanic membrane, otherwise known as the eardrum. And that's the structure right here. This is the part that's going to separate our outer ear, our external ear, from our middle ear. The bone surrounding the ear is very porous and contains areas to hold air as well to help conduct sound. Now the tympanic membrane, our eardrum, is going to be the entryway into the middle ear. The middle ear is also lined with air, A-I-R, and it's composed, besides the tympanic membrane, we've got this tube over here. This tube is referred to as the eustachian tube, and that's spelled E-U-S-T-I-A-N. And this is the tube that connects your middle ear to the back of your throat. So when you go up in a plane and it feels like your ears are popping and you want to swallow, it's your body prompting you to try to equalize the pressure between what's going on in the cabin around you and what's going on in your middle ear here. Okay, This, of course, being anatomy, has a synonym. We call it the auditory tube. Now, the other area we have is this area where there's three bones that come together. Because, yes, there are actually bones in your ear. And here they are. Uh, the first bone is referred to whoops, as the hammer, otherwise known as the mallet. So the malleus is, sorry about that, malleus is also known as the hammer. The second bone over here is referred to as the incus or the anvil. And then the third bone over here is referred to as the stapes or the stirrup. So the, uh, the hammer bones connected to the anvil, which fell out, and the anvil's connected to the stirrup, which is in place. And this is the way that we connect from the middle ear to the inner ear here. And the inner ear is a little bit different in that it is actually filled with fluid. So we're making a transition from an air environment to a fluid environment over here. And um, the spot where the middle ear and the inner ear connect is called the oval window. Now just like there was this tube allowing us to equalize pressure between the outer and middle ear, there's actually an area that allows us to equalize pressure between the middle and inner ear, and it occurs at the round window, which unfortunately you can't really see on this model. But taking a look at the inner ear, it's composed of three big parts. We've got this area here called the cochlea, which looks like a seashell. We've got this middle area here called the vestibule, and then we've got these three loops of bone and cartilage here, which are referred to as the um, semicircular canals. And the semicircular canals are in charge of dynamic equilibrium, the vestibule is in charge of static equilibrium, and the cochlea is in charge of hearing. And these sections of the inner ear 
connect to this nerve over here, which is cranial nerve, nerve number eight, the nerve of hearing and equilibrium. So we have a branch of cranial nerve number eight, the acoustic branch, that is in charge of hearing, and we have a branch over here that is in charge of equilibrium, or um, otherwise known as the vestibular area. So guess what? The name vestibular cochlear nerve for cranial nerve number eight comes from the connections it has to the different parts of the inner ear.